Please join us in welcoming Get Your Guide co-founder and COO, Tao Tao, and Skip founder and CEO, Rafit Ali. Hey folks, how are you doing? How's, how's mid-morning mid working for you guys? Still good? Still good? Feeling good? Okay, there's a break coming right after this, but 10 minutes more, so I promise, so you can get coffee and, and snacks and everything else. So, um, and also, I think I mentioned this in the morning, for those of you who weren't here, there's a roof deck, uh, which you can go out as well and get some fresh air into your system. So uh, hopefully you will do that. So I'm very excited to welcome Tao Tao, who's the co-founder and COO of Get Your Guide. I did a teaser of our announcement, Tao, this morning. And so um, Tao is actually not sitting in Bali. He's sitting in his office. This is his office. Things you have to do these days to get people back into office, which is things like this, which is to make it more hospitable. The reason Tao couldn't be here is because he has a board meeting tomorrow. Is it tomorrow, Tao? Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow. And the CEO, his co-founder, Johannes, is about to have a baby, uh, about to have a baby right? Final stretches. Final stretches. So both of them could not be here. So. Um, I think many of you heard this this morning. We announced that we're tying up with Get Your Guide to expand our coverage at Skift of the tours and activities sector, what many also call the experiences sector. It's known by various names. And so the conversation that he and I are going to have is one at his board meeting tomorrow. What's going to make your board happy? What are you going to tell them that's going to be happy? What are you going to tell them that's going to make them not so happy if there's something you're telling them? And why you think this is time for the tours and activities coverage? What are you missing? And uh, what, is, what are you seeing in your industry that makes you feel that there needs to be a more strategic conversation about where the sector is going? So um, tell us about why you think the present coverage in the tours and activities sector is not there, and why do you, why do you think there's a need for a larger strategic conversation? Absolutely, and um, Rafa, thanks so much for having me, even though uh, I'm super bummed not to be with you. Uh, the, the conferences is part of the reason I think this industry is so much fun. I think to your question, uh, time and timing is, is exactly the key word. L let me just give you a very quick short story. So when we started Get Your Guide, uh, first of all, we didn't win a single startup competition. And at one of those travel summits, not dissimilar to this one, I think it was in 2010, one of the judges who is now the CEO of a major travel company, not naming names. And uh, he told us that you operate in a very big market, but it's too fragmented and it will remain offline. Now, I think we all know at this point that the travel experiences market is a over 200 billion serviceable addressable market and really only hotels and, and flights operate in the similar stratosphere. Now, despite that, we really think that the experiences category has been um, underrepresented uh, within the travel industry. And, and the time is really to change that now. And, and the reason now is the right time is because there are two big macro secular trends driving that. One of the macro trends has been already ongoing for the last 10 to 20 years, which is really this entire shift towards the experience economy. We see that consumer spending on experiences is vastly outpacing that on consumer goods. And especially as we now exit the pandemic, I think all locked up and just watching and one TV show after the other or travel shows and realizing it's not the same thing. It's the, the modern explorer really wants to go out there and experience and that trend will just accelerate. And the other trend that's accelerating is very much uh, to the point of digitization. Um, our industry has been probably 80% offline pre-pandemic. And if there's one thing, maybe one positive we can take from the pandemic is this exponential digitization that's happening across all industries but in a, in a way uh, disproportionately benefiting our industry. And so when you put, co so while COVID really put the industry in hold for two years, we think it actually has brought the midterm future much closer and it's driven by these two macro trends. And you know, given that this industry is now poised to grow faster than overall travel, we just thought that it's worth elevating this discussion together with Skift. And so um, a bit of it is you don't get the respect that whole joke that we don't get enough respect in the industry um, to be elevated for potentially, for instance, the same as everybody talks about the short-term rental world. And so I think one of the, one of the goals from our side, we cover short-term rental obviously daily on Skift and, and also do research as well. And one of the goals for us to do this is to be able to create more research data, 
strategic conversation around the tourism activity sector. So um, excited to start doing that. So your business, as you said, was really, really shut. Like a lot of other sectors in travel, hotels, airlines had some business, right? The tourism activity sector, tour operator sector were like the, the one that were really shut for a large part of two years. But you've come back really, really fast. I know you're hiring a lot as well. And so give a sense of the state of your business, the presentation that you're gonna to present to your board tomorrow. What's the headline there? Well, the headline, of course, is the partnership with Skift uh, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the second headline, um, so Rafat, as you know, and you already alluded to this, is uh, this was obviously the most severe crisis for the entire world and certainly for the travel industry in the last 75 years. And I don't know if you know this, but in, in March 2020, we actually hit exact zero revenue. I think we had two bookings somewhere in oh New Zealand. God. Wow. And um, I mean, it was tough on New us. Zealand of all the countries, right? Okay, go ahead. Yes. Exactly. I mean, it was very tough on us, but I think it was even tougher uh, for a lot of experienced creators, a lot of mom and pop stores that, you know, have their entire livelihoods um, on those businesses. So, so two very hard years. And, you know, to our board, I think what we're very happy to tell them is, um, you know, we have triple digit growth, not only versus uh, 2021, but even versus 2020, uh, 2019, so pre-pandemic. So really coming out of this crisis sprinting, um, as mentioned, because of this vast increased digitization and customers really wanting to get out there and, uh, and do experiences. So I think this will, be a, this will be a joyous board meeting, better than two years ago. Better than two years ago. So in terms of inventory that you have and, and, and a lot of other players have, how much of the battle now is creating unique inventory versus distributing existing inventory sort of where's that conversation today in the industry? Yeah, so the, the conversation is very much both on the consumer end and on their supplier side of the uh, experience creator side of things. On the consumer side of things, we actually think there is a great opportunity uh, to really help customers curate and organize the experiences. So when you think about flights and hotels, a lot is driven by price, location, convenience. When you think about experiences, it's a much more personal choice. So whether it's your first time in Paris or second time in Paris with kids, without kids, whether you're into Emily in Paris or whether you're more into art or whether you're more into food. So it's a very personal choice. And curating that is, is a huge challenge from a product perspective. And then when you think about connecting to their supplies with our experience creators, the question is how do you get real-time availability and perfect fulfillment with experience creators ranging from large attractions all the way to small mom and pop stores. So, you know, more than 50% of the industry has less than five full-time employees. And, and so making that connectivity happen and making sure the fulfillment is smooth so you can scan your QR code at the big attraction or you have the perfect pickup timing or can communicate with your tour guide that you're running late, that will require a lot of technology investment over the years to come. And are you looking at, I know, I think pre-pandemic you maybe bought something, I don't, I, I, I recall something, you bought a company or two. Are you thinking of acquisitions that will help you build faster? The way we think about growth is primarily through organic growth um, because the, the major investments we need to do is to make sure you build a brand, build the best technology and really aggregate all the supply there is in the world. There's still a lot of inventory out there we don't have and we're working just very hard with all the local teams. There's a couple experiments we're doing here and there, but the bulk uh, of our work is really to make sure that we can bring the experiences online and simplify the revenue growth for our uh, experienced creators. And in terms of the funnel, is Google still the biggest funnel? And, and how do you sort of become, how, how do you become less dependent on it, if you will? The, the, the way we think about Google is, is really a partnership. Um, so it's a wonderful customer acquisition channel for us. And what we see increasingly is that loyal customers are migrating to the app ecosystem where we have a lot of differentiated value at. And so I think that's quite similar to um, a lot of businesses. So for example, on the app, it's much easier to manage your bookings. You can cancel up to 24 hours in advance. You can chat uh, with your local guide. Um, you can look at all your vouchers, you have the itinerary. So it's so a lot of value add that we think the app uh, ecosystem can bring. And that's also um, a focus for us while I continue to lean on Google, but also lots of other channels um, to acquire customers. And so um, Chesky, who's gonna be on stage tomorrow, has just said last week that they're gonna lean back into experiences. So I guess it's good news for the industry or doesn't really matter to you? Well, certainly good news for the industry and uh, will make for good coverage uh, on your end. Yes. I mean, I think the, the way I look at it is that, you know, any attractive market will have competition and uh, we're very used to uh, big or small companies trying to enter our space. Um, I think, and, and the reason is really because travel experiences, as, as we discussed earlier, is 
it's going to be the most exciting part, I think, of the travel industry for years to come. You have these, you know, huge trends, experience economy, unleashed digitization. And so I think it's just going to be an exciting space. And, you know, we're very much focused on our customers and our strategy. All right. Thank you, Tao, and good luck with the board meeting tomorrow. And here's a short video on the power of experiences, and then we're going to go to break. Thank you, Tao. Buongiorno, benvenuti a tutti quanti, siete ai Musei Vaticani. Io sono il clavigero, colui che custodisce e conserva tutte le chiavi dei Musei Vaticani. Per me non è una fatica alzarmi la mattina presto, perché so di poter accompagnare i primi visitatori che vengono da ogni parte del mondo a vedere i Musei del Papa. Siamo davanti al Museo Pio Clementino e abbiamo la chiave più antica che appunto apre questo museo. Questo tour ti dà un senso di serenità, di pace. Sentire l'odore della storia, il tintinnio delle chiavi, vedere la maestosità di questi palazzi. Le porte che dovrebbero rimanere sempre aperte sono le porte della bellezza, della cultura. L'arte ha il potere di unire tutti i popoli e tutte le religioni del mondo. La chiave più importante che è la chiave che apre e chiude la Cappella Sistina è chiusa dentro una busta sigillata e rimango affascinato nel vedere lo stupore delle persone che vengono a visitare i musei aprendo porta dopo porta e alla fine trovarsi da soli e ammirare il giudizio universale ammirando la Cappella Sistina. 